On the Subtitles tab, you'll find a variety of options for adding subtitles from your source to your video. Before setting these options, you'll need to understand a little bit about the types of subtitles you're likely to run across in your source and what's supported in your output container. There are many formats subtitles may be found in, but Handbrake currently only supports three. Closed captions, Bob Sub, and SRT. Closed captions are found primarily in ATSC digital TV broadcasts, but are also sometimes included on DVDs. They are traditionally intended for the hearing impaired, so typically they include both dialogue and a description of any other sounds in the video. Bob Sub is the standard format for DVD subtitles and typically includes just actual dialogue. SRT is a generic format usually created by converting subtitles from another format like Bob Sub. SRT subtitles are often found in separate files but may sometimes be found included in your source file. To add subtitles from your source, first click the Add button. Then select the subtitle that's been added and select the track from the drop-down list. Then you can look at some additional options. Forced only is a setting used for subtitles from a DVD which automatically display even when the viewer doesn't have any subtitle turned on. Typically these are used to duplicate subtitles which were originally part of the content. For example, if the original language of your video is English, but there are portions where some characters speak German, forced subtitles can be used to translate them automatically. These forced subtitles may be part of a standard subtitle track or in a completely separate track. If a subtitle track includes both forced and non-forced subtitles, check forced only if you want just the forced subtitles. If you want both regular and forced portions of a given subtitle track, leave this unchecked. Burned in is an option which will add your subtitles permanently to your video, making it literally part of the video stream. There are two reasons you might use this option. Number one, it's possible your playback device doesn't even support selectable subtitles. That means having them burned into the video is the only option if you want to see them. Number two, if you are creating an MP4 file, but your subtitles are in Bob Sub format, you must burn them in or else you won't be able to add them at all. The default setting is specific to MKV files. If you set a subtitle track as default, it will automatically display when the video plays without having to select anything. The last three options, SRT language, character code, and offset, are specific to SRT formatted subtitles. So let's go ahead and load some of those and take a look at how that works. If you've created or downloaded SRT subtitles, they can be used as a source in Handbrake, but you must first use the import feature to do that. In the open dialog, browse to the location where your subtitles are stored and double click on them. You'll then see that your subtitles have been added to the drop down list where you can select them. SRT subtitles do not select forced flags nor can they be burned into your video because they are actual text rather than graphics like Bob Sub subtitles. They can however be added to a, an MKV file and set to default. You can then set some SRT specific options including the language, the offset, this is how much delay it, there should be before the subtitles display, and then the character code. Most of the time a character code of UTF-8 will be correct although UTF-16 as well as ISO 8859-1 are also somewhat common. SRT files are particularly useful for MP4 output since you can add as many as you like and keep them separate from the video versus only one Bob subtrack which must be burned in. They can also be used in MKV files. There are many programs which can extract Bob sub subtitles from a DVD and convert them to SRT format, but I won't get into that for the sake of simplicity. Also keep in mind, even though both MKV and MP4 files may have multiple subtitle streams, that doesn't automatically mean your player will recognize more than one. In many cases, video players only recognize one subtitle stream and will not show you any options beyond that no matter how many there actually are in the file.
If your source is a DVD, Handbrake can create chapters by copying the chapter points from the original source. You can find this option on the Chapters tab. Check the box next to Create Chapter Markers to enable this feature. You can also give your chapter points custom names if you prefer. This is similar to a feature you see on many DVDs where the Chapter Selection menu may have names for the chapters, but there's no way for Handbrake to find these names since they're only graphics on a menu rather than information actually embedded into the DVD files. To change the name of a chapter, click on it, delete the contents, and replace them with your own. And that's all there is to it. This concludes the last of the options that you'll need to set for your video. Now you're ready to begin encoding. If you wish, at this point you can simply click the Start button and Handbrake will create your output file, including all the video, audio, and subtitle streams you've selected. However, there are some other options you might want to consider. One possibility is saving most of the options you've set so far so they can be reused in the future. This way you don't need to go back and set them again every time you create a new job. Handbrake already comes with several presets, which you'll find listed on the right side of the main window. You can create your own preset based on the current settings by clicking the Add button. Give your preset a descriptive name, and click the Add button. If you wish to have your cropping values also stored along with your preset, make sure to check the box next to that option. Most of the time this is not recommended as Handbrake's automatic cropping works very well. There are some options which aren't saved in presets. Subtitle and chapter options, which tend to vary greatly between sources, won't be included. If you've selected a specific audio track instead of keeping the automatic selection, that won't be saved either. However, all the audio encoding options will be preserved. You can also update a profile with your current settings at any time. Simply make the desired changes, then right click on the preset you wish to update, and select Save Changes. And of course, yes when prompted. It will tell you that the preset has been saved. You can also change which preset will be loaded automatically when Handbrake starts. By default, Normal is the one selected. But if you want to select your own, simply click on it and click the Set Default button. Answer Yes, and that's it. New Default Preset Set tells you that every time you open Handbrake, this preset will automatically be used as the default preset. You can, of course, change this for any job at any time. Handbrake also has the capability of batch encoding, that is, encoding more than one job, one after another, in a batch. To use this feature, once you finish setting all your options for your encoding job, click the Add to Queue button. Then either close or minimize the queue window and set your options for another job. Once your final job is queued, you have a few options. Obviously, the first is simply encoding. You can run all your jobs sequentially, creating your output files one at a time. Or if you don't want to run your encoding jobs, you have some other options under the queue button. You can import or export a queue here, which means saving the job so that you can come back into Handbrake and run them at a later time or you can even generate a batch script. Since Handbrake is, at its heart, a command line tool, a simple batch file can be used to run the encoding jobs without even opening the GUI. That's what the batch script generated by this function will do. Select this option, and then navigate to the location on your hard drive where you would like to save your batch file. Then give it a name, and click the Save button. 
It will tell you your batch script has been successfully saved. Later, when you wish to run your encoding job, simply locate it on your hard drive and double click on it. That will open up a command window which will then in turn run handbrake and perform your encoding and other operations required to produce your output files. Depending on your computer and exactly what you're encoding, this process may take anywhere from several minutes to many hours. Once it completes, you'll have either a MP4 or MKV file suitable for playing on the device of your choice.